and it was hard to piece together all the details. So thank God we had ace reporters on the scene, like our next guest, Sinjin Barnard Smith of the San Francisco Chronicle, who's been here since 2022, previously covered law enforcement at the Houston Chronicle. And he landed the interview with the the hero, and that is Sergeant Joelle Harrell. I think I'm saying her name correctly, uh, who was the first on the scene with Ricky Pearsall and had that incredible audio where she said Ricky asked if he was gonna if he was gonna die, and she calmed him down. So, Sinjin, we want to welcome you to the Murph and Marcus Show. Brian Murphy, Marcus Boucher. We usually talk about the 49ers on the field. This one, quite obviously, off the field. So thanks for hopping on uh, and tell us, Sinjin, about how you found Joelle Harrell and, and kind of tracked her down. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, sometimes as a reporter, you just get lucky. And uh, I have to be honest, this was one of those times. Um, I had flown back from the East Coast the day before and got a call early in the morning when I'm totally jet lagged that my editor wanted me to work. So uh, I headed down to Union Square. I was I was trying to just initially just get react from from people around there about about the whole thing. And uh, while I was there, I started talking to a police officer who, um, frankly, it turned out to be Joel's husband. Um, and so he's like, "Well, hey, I have this great story. You you, you should go talk to my wife." And and so. Um, I did. I, I walk over and say, hey, your, your husband sent me. I, I hear you have a story to tell. And at first, I mean, you know, rank and file officers are often are not willing to talk to reporters because you need, you need to they need to get sign off from their, their bosses. They don't want to get in trouble. So I talked to Joel for a minute or two and I finally said, OK, all right, I'm going to go call. I'm going to go call the PIO, the public information officer. Um, I talked to him, convinced him to let me do the interview on the record. Um, chatted with her and then dashed over to our newsroom and typed it up. <laughs> That's classic reporting, man. On the scene, you got to get on the scene. So she, this is kind of amazing. Husband and wife both are foot patrol. Yeah, at Union and Square? they had. Yeah, and they had been working there. The day before, that's that's sort of what really shocked me is, uh, you know, if I had been in that sort of situation, uh, <laughs> going back to work the next day after, you know, like having a, you know try to keep a guy from bleeding out. Um, but in Union Square, so, so Officer Joelle typically is in the off, uh, chief's office, but she and her husband do uh, are members of these uh, safe shopper initiative that the mayor put in place um, to try to have the bigger foot presence around Union Square. And I, I guess really for situations kind of like this, right? Um, and so uh, they had been there that day and then they were there the next day. And they and... You know, if, if, if you're ever out there, right, there's a big mobile command. There's, um, you know, the, the sergeant is going around an eight an ATV and there, there are numerous other officers out there. Have you, Sinjin, have you, is that one of your beats is, is um, I don't know. No, so I cover, I covered law enforcement in Houston for eight years, but here I, um, I cover city hall. So sometimes I'll write about police issues. Um, last year, for example, if you remember the Bob Lee shooting, uh, I, I yeah. was quite involved in that for a little while. Um, and some other police stories, but it's a little bit of a wider uh, focus than than just the law enforcement reporting well, I was doing in Houston. You know, thank goodness you were on the scene to talk. So tell us about interviewing her and, and what you know. We can read the story. Everybody should go to the SF. SF yeah, 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 yeah. No, of, of course. Um, well, you know, I mean, I think, like I said, there's often this dynamic with reporters and law enforcement, and you know, if you're a if you're a reporter, it's totally normal for uh, an officer to be a little standoffish um but you know i just i just would you know try to chat with her and with her husband and, and kind of get a sense of things and you know it seemed very straightforward and also very dramatic right i mean can you imagine you hear these two two guns so what she described initially was hearing these two two cracks right down about a block away but often they're skateboarders in the streets nearby who are hanging out. And when they're doing tricks, they're pretty loud. So, you know, the first thought going through her mind was, is that bad? I don't, I don't think so. That sounds louder than that. So she goes into motion and is running down the street. And then, you know, shoppers along some of those high end stores at first didn't even realize what was happening. And then they see her sprinting down the street and then they sort of scatter. She darts around this mini bus and then she sees Pearsall, uh, kind of crouched down with blood on his chest and on his head, and that's when she kind of goes into goes into action. 
Man. And it's my understanding from your story that Sergeant Joel did not know Ricky Pearsall or even the fact that he was a San Francisco 49er. Nope. I, and I think, I think like, if, if you're, you know, in that first moment, it, it would take a second anyways to, to sort of figure out who someone was. But, um, yeah, I don't think she had any idea whatsoever. And then as, as he's sort of in that mo- moment of realizing, oh, you know, crap, I, I've been shot in the chest and my, what's going to happen to me? And he sort of, was sort of talking about, I, I think he was just talking sort of stream of consciousness. And that's when he, he was, he said he was on the 49ers and, um, you know, but yeah, I, I don't, I think initially she, she had no, no clue who he was. Wow. And she shared you the details. It was very intimate right away. Like they got, they, they, the two of them, I don't know, did she, how long they were together? Like about a minute or two, but they kind of got right into it. He no, said, I mean, yeah. I think, I think from what it sounded like she was at his side within about under a minute, I think from the time the actual shooting happened or with it within about a minute. And then, right, there's this other f- flood of law enforcement and the ambulance that got there. And that was when it, within a few more minutes. I don't know. I don't I'm not 100 percent sure how long it actually took before they got mm-hmm. him on the gurney. But, it, you know, it was obviously quite quick. Um, yeah, I think it was it was probably just a few minutes where, you know, and right. She's in that mode where she's just trying to say, stay calm. Right. She, you know, she was she was talking to me. One thing she noticed in that moment is he, he was starting to get really uh, tense or a- amped up, right? Which I, 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 I would certainly be as well if I was in that situation, right? Um, wondering what was going to happen to me. And so she was really focused on just trying to keep him calm and still so that she could try to keep that wound as compressed as possible and keep pressure on it and, and try to keep him safe as possible. And she says, and we're talking to Sinjin Bernard Smith, uh, San Francisco Chronicle reporter who was on the scene and interviewed San Francisco Police Sergeant Joel Harrell, who was the first on the scene with Ricky Pearsall Saturday at Union Square. She said, quite frankly, there's a lot of blood, huh? Yeah. So uh, there, she said, you know, she comes up to him. And one of the weird things is that she said at that point he didn't have his shirt on. I don't know. I, I assume it must have been because. Uh, he probably took it off to try to like see the wound and figure out what was going on. But he had blood on his head and his, his chest. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't, I, I wonder if, you know, he, he was trying to stop the bleeding with his hand and put it on his, or put it on his head or something like that. I don't know. But um, yeah, that was one of the things that stood out. And then uh, when you're a reporter and you're in these situations, there are these little details that sort of stick with you. And one thing that, for me, when I was talking to her, she talked about like taking off her cap. You know, she 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 had one of those baseball caps that are part of the uniform, and then using that on the back on his back as she was trying to uh, sort of put pressure on the wound and slow the bleeding. So she had her hat on his back and then his shirt pressed up against his chest. Wow, what a detail! Incredible detail. The other detail that stuck out is the the sandals or the slides or whatever oh, that were slides. Yeah. So she says, hey, whose slides are those? Um, there was a pair of black and white, uh, you know, uh, so, sort of like flip-flops for if, if, if you have listeners who don't know what slides are. Yeah. Um, and so there are just some some slides on the street next to him. And she said, whose are those? Are those the shoot? You know, and he's, those are shooters. And so uh, I, I don't... I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I have no idea about the state of mind of the shooter, or the the rob, attempted robber, right? But it did stick out to me. If you're going to try to rob someone, yeah. I would think you would use a better yeah. footwear. I know, because right. so, so when cops caught, caught the person they said did the shooting, just down, they're just down the block, right? I mean, if, if you map it out on, on Google Maps, it's about 200 feet away. And so they had found a, um, you know, in the, in the minutes afterwards, they found a gun at 28 Geary. So they, she was at about 77 Geary, 200 feet away. That's 28 Geary. And then the, the, the suspected shooter, I guess, was trying to go across the street when an officer saw him. And so they go back to her and have her, they ask her to go look at the shoot the shooter. And, um, you know, there's this shoeless man, mm-hmm just down the street i guess he also had um he may have he also had a wound and it's unclear if he 
shot himself while he was running away or if there was during the altercation, maybe Pearsall got the gun and somehow, or, or if during the scuffle, maybe he got shot in the arm, but yeah, slides on the street. Man, oh man. Yeah. And that was actually my last follow up question. I know you said there's not too many details about how the suspect also was shot in the arm. That just goes back to them tussling over the gun or like you said, just no details at this point. Right. I don't, we're still working on the story. I, right. It's, I can only imagine it would have been maybe during the scuffle or the, you know, the other very real possibility as he's running away that maybe he, he accidentally shot himself. Man. Oh man. Wow. Well, Sinjin, great job being on the scene, man. That's what it's all about. Getting down there and being feet, uh, boots on the ground. And you landed this story. Now she's like on good morning America and everything is all spinning. Really? I'm so pleased to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. She was, she was so nice. It was a real, it's always a treat when you can uh, tell a good story. And uh, oh yeah, and talk about like you know I know it's her job to do this, but it's still to be the first one on the scene is you know that's like San Francisco's finest. There she was, and the fact I mean this is like way too lo- big of a question to ask at the very end because we only like sixty seconds left. But you say you work in City Hall, and I don't want to, you know God this by mentioning this it'll divide the room immediately. But there is an increased police presence in Union Square. That's just a fact that, that Mayor Breed did do that. You said safe shopping or what you called it, or was it? The safe shopper initiative. I yeah. believe, I got here in 2022. I believe that sort of started, I, I, I mean, I imagine, I believe there's already a pretty heavy police presence in that part of downtown anyways. But do you remember those uh, retail takedowns? During, yeah, yeah uh, definitely, yes. COVID, yeah. I believe, I believe the police, the department kind of ramped it up even further after those the those incidents that was what uh joelle's husband told me okay great reporting sinjin bernard smith it's uh why and i'm an old chronicle reporter myself so uh i'll give you the secret handshake when i meet you um but so, so it's great to have um your outstanding reporting on the scene it really illuminated everything and brought that story to everyone's attention so thank you sinjin for your time yeah thank you yeah thanks so much all right have a great- yeah, Sinjin Bernard Smith. Wow. wow. Right? Boots on the ground. And this woman, Sergeant Joel Hare, and she and her husband are both working Union Square. Incredible. SF's finest, man. Wow.